G'day listeners, Danny Crouch here, the listening coach from Choose Your Chapter. We're here at uh, the start of Strengths TV and uh, we've brought along Donna Broadback, uh, our relationship coach. Uh, hey Donna, how are you? Yeah, well, thank you, Danny. How about yourself? Yeah, sensational. Awesome, as I like to say. Great uh, great start to a week, is it, down there in cold Melbourne? <laughs> yeah, the, the heat is definitely getting a workout, that's for sure. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, we brought a friend along with us tonight, uh, and I hope I say this correctly. I should have, probably should have checked the surname. It's Jeff Blazkowski. Is that right, Jeff? Uh, spot on, mate. That's uh, that's quite unusual that someone gets it that that right the first time. Perfect. I'm impressed. <laughs> Thanks for coming along, mate. And we're uh, we're going to take a look at your strengths tonight. Your top five. Is that right? Yep. Sounds good. Nice one. So do you want to just uh, start by telling us a little bit about yourself, who you are, why you're in our country with that accent, and uh, what you love doing? Yep, I moved here in 2001 with my wife and two children at the time. Uh, Maxine was on a working holiday. She's a, an Australian citizen. Uh, and uh, yeah, it didn't take me too long to figure out this is the place to be. And uh, yeah, moved over, like I say, May 2001. Uh, I'm actually a, a baker and confectioner by trade. You'd never guess that with my current um, work I do. Um, but yeah, soon got out of that, got into golf and sports very early on. Um, Everything from an operational role at a golf club right through to sales manager, sales executive, and that's sort of what I've been doing uh, for the last 10 years, basically. Awesome, awesome. And uh, loving our gorgeous country, I take it? It's fantastic, mate. Yeah, great yeah. strength here. Winter's, win, winter's 23 degrees. It's awesome. I do keep letting them all know back home that as well. So. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Well, um, as you know, Donna and I are, are coaches and uh, we work towards uh, improving people's lives and, and make things better for them. Um, so we're going to go through uh, for the next hour or so, um, coaching you through your raw talents and hopefully developing them into strengths. Um, so are you comfortable? You got, a, you got a drink of water or a cup of tea or a nice cold beer there sitting there for you? I'm, I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm recovering from a game of football, so... I'm quite happy just to sit here and listen. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, you won't be doing all the listening, mate. There's a bit of talking involved. Good. But, um, I like that as well. Nice one. I bet you do. I bet you do. Looking at the, your top five. Um, now, we just like to, to lay a bit of groundwork, mate. We we will ask certain questions. Uh, it's purely up to you whether you want to go into great detail or just sort of give a tip of the iceberg. Um, but from our perspective, we, we come across as accepting whatever answers you want to provide. And uh, there's definitely no judgment or um, no preconceived ideas of where you're coming from. Uh, does that make sense to you? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And um, if at any time you feel like we're overstepping the line or um, you don't want to go somewhere, just just speak up, mate. We, um, we don't believe in there being any right or wrong or good or bad. It's just you see the world the way you do and we see it the way our, we, we see our world. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So I'll just give you and uh, a couple of the listeners a, a little bit of a background on what we've got here. Um, generally, we find when it comes to strengths, uh, we're brought up in a society where kids uh, are taught either by their parents or the, 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 the teachers or society itself that um, to focus on your weaknesses. So quite often we're compelled to look at uh, what we do well and what we do poorly and we're sent home to focus on basically what we're doing poorly to try and improve that. So what uh, Gallup and uh, Clifton have come up with is a strength profiling tool that allow, enables you to, to focus on your strengths and, and really identify your raw talents. And with coaches like myself and Donna, uh, we can work towards developing them into real mature strengths. Now, uh, if you're not aware, Gallup are the biggest online and data research company in the world. And with their research, they've come up with these 34 themes or 34 talents that you're looking at the screen at the moment on a grid. Um, now, they come under four categories, executing, influencing, relationship building, and strategic thinking. And uh, each of the 34 strengths come under those different themes. Now, you may have heard of disc profiling or Maya Briggs. 
Uh, they, they, they form similar categories of profiling, but strengths is quite unique uh, in the sense that it's, it's raw talent. So it's not a behaviour you can tend to challenge or change. Um, it's what comes naturally to you. So we've identified your raw talents or your strengths by completing the Clifton Strengths Finder tool. Is that right, Jeff? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, awesome. Now, it wasn't influenced in any way. You, you answered the questions at your own pace and, and they were true and correct by you. Is that, yeah? That's correct, yeah. Just pretty yeah. much went with my gut feeling with everyone straight away. Awesome, awesome. So a pretty simple, straightforward test or assessment. Um, and it's come up with your top five as being uh, communication, number one. Yep. Yep, strategic. Then yep. includer, ideation, yep. and woo. So for those of you who haven't heard those terms before, they're, they're quirky little fun names that Gallup and Clifton came up with just to create uh, a differentiation between the themes. So what Donna and I are going to do tonight for you, Jeff, is basically go through those themes with you and see if we can identify your raw talents and, and start to develop them into uh, your natural strengths. How does that sound? Sounds good. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, I'm going to hand it over to Donna, and she's going to start with communication and go through a few things with you about what it means, and, and hopefully you'll chime in with your insights and, and what you know. Take it away, Donna. No Thanks, Donny. Um, so what I thought I might do, Jeff, if that's cool with you, is start off with a few questions just to um, to get you connecting and really feeling what communication means to you. Um, so is that cool with you? Yes, yeah, fine. Wonderful. Um, so can you tell me, how would you describe yourself in using three short phrases? Sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> yeah, so how would you describe yourself using three short phrases? Um, geez, um, I would, I'm a bit of a, a storyteller. Um, I guess I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a talker in general, so I pretty much express everything in three words. Um, and, I, and that helps me to connect with other people as well. So they would be the three biggest things for me. Cool, cool. Um, and so what would you say your friends, how, how would your friends describe you? <laughs> you want me to answer that truthfully? Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I think, I think um, yeah, they probably say I was a bit of a chatterbox to be honest, uh, <laughs> uh, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I'm, I'm friendly, helpful, yeah, I always try, and, always try and do the right thing by everybody, include everybody. That's generally my everyday life, basically. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, and so, what would you say is something that you do best? Um, are we talking about communication in particular, or um, just generally? What would generally? you say? Um, I, I think I'm um, very relatable. I, I pretty much can talk to anybody in any environment, and a lot of my opportunity comes out of that um, strength. I guess I guess is the right word. So yeah. 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 Cool. Um, so what you what you've just said there are actually um, very strong tell telltale signs for somebody who has the types of strengths that you have. So um, that's really interesting to hear. Um, can you tell me about a time where you've met somebody and you found that you've been able to connect with them really well because of your communication? Um, I think. Um I think a lot, of, a lot of the friendships I have now are, <laughs> are usually forged through professional connections in the first instance, and they develop into friendships. Um, it's really hard to sort of pinpoint one in particular because, you know, I'm pretty much friends with everybody I make contact with. But you know, I've got relationships. You know, I, I met a friend. Uh, I met a guy. Um, 
they didn't know from a bar of soap, met him in person. I just started talking to a guy in a in a barber shop because he's got a Manchester United shirt on, you know. Have a good good old chat to him and end up being friends out of just a random conversation in a barber shop. That's sort of the norm for me. <laughs> That's really a good example of how things happen, you know. And, and professionally, anything, you know, any, any any relationship that starts might be on the golf course in particular, because I play a lot of golf and I do a lot of corporate stuff like that. It generally, mm -hmm. turns into friendship and and you know, getting involved with those people, you know, in a social aspect outside of golf um, after meeting them in in the professional environment. So, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. That's quite um, hard to talk about yourself, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> It can be a little bit, but um, yeah, a bit confronting. About, yeah, yeah, but this is all about getting to know yourself a little bit more as well. So exactly, that's what it's all about. Um, and a lot of what you're saying um, is very true to communication because people with communication as one of their strengths are generally good conversationalists and presenters. Um, so would you say do you do a lot of presenting or anything like that? I do. I've got no no issues getting up in front of a a lot of people um, probably started out at a young age playing football at quite a good level and doing award ceremonies and, and being in the corporate golf sector, you know, hosting days for 200 plus people and having to get on the microphone and talk to them all as a group, um, tell them what's going on for the day. So yeah, definitely no issues with public speaking whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, one of the things as well uh, that somebody with communication will have is um, the gift to be able to explain things to other people with great clarity. Um, so being a presenter, you would have to be able to communicate with other people with that clarity, especially when you're speaking to the 200 plus people. Um, so when you're doing that, that's when your communication is kicking in. Um, so that's also very interesting to see. Um, your vocabulary also allows you to tell stories to people and express your ideas. Um, which is also really great in terms of building friendships and building relationships um, professionally and personally, but also being able to do that when you're presenting too. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. just the accent, just the accent gets in the way on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> so, aside from the accent, <laughs> um, do you find that you generally have? the right words to express a thought or a feeling? Uh, generally, some, sometimes I have a tendency to mumble a little bit and it's not intentional, but you, usually when I'm in the environment where I'm talking to a large group, I, I really focus on the speech side of things um, and my pronunciation. I think it's just laziness that creeps in there. But I do have a tendency to mumble, but, but it kind of like, I can I kind of like turn that off when I'm, I'm in that environment where I have to communicate to a larger group. I, I don't know, maybe maybe that scenario makes me focus more. I don't know. Yeah, yeah you kind of just turn on, don't you? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and so when you meet new people, do you find that you're able to put them at ease quite quickly? Yeah, I do. Uh, no issues whatsoever there. You know, usually a bit of banter along the way sort of helps break the ice a lot a lot of the time and uh, I believe I sort of read people initially quite well, um, what they're about and the boundaries. I think it's important to know what your boundaries are when you meet somebody for the first time and they usually ease in there and, and then just let it develop and take its natural course. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, that is one of the really key things as well about communication is being able to walk into a situation and make somebody else feel really comfortable. And that kind of, there's a bit of a combination happening there. So um, your individualization, uh, sorry, includer, will also play in there. So some of your strengths will sometimes come together and work as one. Um, so includer we'll discuss a little bit later. But just as a brief understanding, it is as it sounds um, that you're able to include somebody in that conversation and make them feel like they're easy, they're comfortable with you. So yeah. that's um, that's how they come in, they work together. Um, and then also having that woo factor as well also would help a lot um, in building those relationships with people because um, you're able to communicate quite clearly and um, get their stories across whilst making them feel like they're included and 
also being able to lose them with your charisma type thing. So um, yeah, that's um, that's some of the things that you'll find with communication and how they all tie in together. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Um, so would you say that you feel that you're quite comfortable talking to people about the really different um, different ways of doing things or things that could um, ways of making things more complete? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I, I like to think I'm uh, I'm good at finding solutions and and coming up with simple solutions and try and communicate that as best I can. So no issues, no no issues with that whatsoever. You know, yeah. some you know I'm not, I don't even feel threatened by their response. You know, I usually talk them into it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my way of thinking. No, no. But, but that's not me saying it's my way or the highway. But if it's if it's if it's factual and I've got someone to back it up, then I'll make that quite clear. And yeah, yeah. So it's answers, so it's coming in there with that real genuine. Yeah. You know, you're wanting to to speak to them on a genuine level. There's no kind of yeah. you know, anything behind that. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and I, I, you know, I, I'm. I'm an ideas type of person. I, you know, if I've got an idea, I'll put it across, and I'll also, I'll also openly take any constructive feedback in, in regards to that. If it's, if it's an, an idea and it turns out to be a bad one, I'm the first one to admit it. You know. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's the thing with all of your strengths. So all five of these. So it's not just communication, um, include and word that will come together as one. But you'll also find that your strategic and ideation will come in as well, um, and they will come in naturally when you're communicating with somebody else, because you'll be having a conversation with them, and then you'll have, you know, you'll meet somebody, you're including them, you have an idea that you're wanting to express to them. Um, you're speaking about all the strategic ways that it could work, and meanwhile, whilst you're doing all of this, you're winning them over. Um, so all of these things will come into play, and they will meet and not, like mesh them together really well. Hmm. The ideas thing gets a little bit much at times, so <laughs> just yeah. seems to seems to take over a little bit at times, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, you you wouldn't be the first to say that, but it can be a really great quality to have as well. Hmm. They are really really cool strengths that you've got coming there, especially cool. when they're all working together and they're working together in a resourceful way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. It's cool. So, yeah. So. Um, you want me to want me to chime yeah. in there, Donna? Uh, yeah, yeah. You can if you like. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm starting to see the connection between the communication and strategic, and um, if you don't mind me taking over, I'm I'm, I'm moving to strategic as your your second strength. Um, yeah. Just we, we might as well join the two together. Just looking at the page there and, and on the screen, is there any statement there that stands out or anything that doesn't seem to resonate with your communication and strategic? Do you do you see that a lot of the time you are being verbally expressive and uh, you find yourself connecting with others through words and, and you're bringing attention to the messages that need to be heard? Um, you need a sounding board and an audience, which sounds like you, mate. Yeah. No, that's definitely it, mate. You know, my closest friend in the world is is my sounding board about all my ideas. You know? Awesome. And he either embraces them or tells me they're, they're nonsense. You know, <laughs> quite honestly. So, yeah. Yeah. but I, I, everything everything I can see there um, is, is is spot on in communication, without a doubt. You know. How do you go with silence? Yeah. Um, silence? No, I'm not not great at silence. <laughs> it's not golden. That's definitely definitely me. You know, the blabbermouth bit is probably probably a little bit like me as well. I get, you know, I, I get a little bit excited, especially with the ideas that start firing. Yeah. I sometimes fire out the ideas before I've given it all the thought that it needs. Yeah. Yeah. It's spontaneous. You know. Mate, to totally understand that. I've got ideation as well at number three. You've got yours at four, and it is uh, quite often. 
we need to verbalize things before we think of them and then by actually hearing them out loud we can ascertain whether it's a great idea or just a shit hot one yeah <laughs> all right um there's some terminology that we use uh with strengths and it just says it there blabbermouth slash basement um I don't know if you've heard of the phrases above the line or below the line or when you're at cause or at effect, um, but we like to call it uh, when you're in the basement or on the balcony. So basically when you're waking up in a good mood and you want to start preaching to the choir, when you're using your strengths, you're coming from the balcony. But uh, say, for example, you wake up with the shits and you're not in such of a good mood, quite often you're coming from the basement. So when you're representing your strength of communication, quite often it does come across like you're a blabbermouth or someone might perceive you as a blabbermouth. Um, but when you're in flow or when you're connecting the way you want to or way, the way you need to at, at work or at home or, or wherever, that's when you're coming from the from the balcony. Do you understand what that means? Yeah. Oh, definitely. I, I would say for myself is I, I very rarely wake up in a bad mood. It's usually, usually how over the day rolls out as to how that affects my mood later in the day, but I'm usually pretty charged. Awesome. Right from the get go, you know, and that's probably where I like to talk a lot. Awesome. <laughs> from the balcony. Yeah, cool. Cool. Yeah. So moving into strategic, and this is quite an interesting strength, uh, and I know it because my, my wife's got it um, at her number one. Um, so I'll go through this table while we're on a roll. Uh, yeah. Again, do any of these stand out as being over the top or not quite true resonating with you? I'm just I'm going to read through now. Sorry? I'm just having a quick read through now, mate. Okay, yep. Well, I'll read them out loud so um, those that are listening on the phone can, can pick right, them up. No so you find that you're willing to consider all of the possibilities so the, the best possible option isn't missed? Most definitely. Yep. 100%. Yep. And yep. you like uh, finding the best route moving forward? Yeah, uh, anything that will, will put us in the right direction and save time and yeah. Yeah, oh, I know where this is going. Um, <laughs> and you bring creative, uh, you like contribute creative in anticipation, imagination and persistence? Most definitely, 110%. Yeah, yeah. you need freedom to make mid-course connections so you can change course if you need to? Oh my, yeah, definitely. I, I I change course quite quite a lot, and it usually comes from the people around me. Yeah. When I'm throwing the ideas out there and you know trying to come up with solutions, awesome. I very much take on board what everyone says to me and absorb every, the best of everybody, basically. Yeah. And I'm guessing you communicate well with the team or whoever it is you got to communicate, and you make sure you include everything in on the situation. I do. Some, sometimes I, I get, like I said to you before, I can I lose focus every now and again with the ideas side of things, and someone has to go, you know, sort of pull me back down from the, the balcony and said, "Mate, just think about this." And yeah, I can get a little bit uh, overexcited. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I do. That does distract me slightly from that statement. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, but you love being able to see where things can go and 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 uh, the way others may not be able to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm, I'm guessing... I'm always thinking three or four steps ahead, mate. Anything I go into, I'm always thinking... I'm not thinking about tomorrow. I'm thinking about 12 months' time and the steps needed to get there. Yeah, cool. So are you a bit of a chess player or do you like those sort of 3D games on the computers and stuff? Yeah, I used to be. used to be. I used to play in the school team for chess and stuff like that. So um, not so much strategic as far as my gaming is concerned and that type of thing. I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm a bit, a bit of a first-person shooter type of guy now, <laughs> which probably, uh, which probably goes against <laughs> everything I've just said, you know. Yeah, yeah. So going back to the table, you hate doing things the same way over and over again. You, you want to find something creative and new and. and always, you... always looking for better ways to do things, mate. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. yeah. You got great peripheral vision. You know what's going on. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I, like I say, the only thing that really holds me back there is my own ideas. Sometimes will, will you know, will push me in a certain direction. Yeah. You know, I've got, like I said to you before, my best friend's he's a very good um, business development sort of project manager type guy, and he's quite often there to bring me back down to earth and gain focus again. So it's just keeping my own ideas in touch, basically. Yeah. When I've got that under control. 
yes, I do see the whole picture. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So coming from the basement, I'm guessing people might see it as you're always trying to try something different with the ideas combining with your strategic and... Yeah, a lot of people have, have sort of said to you know, you obviously know what's going on with the businesses that I've got going at the moment, there's, there's several. Um, I get a lot of criticism for sort of doing too many different things, but um, that's just my nature. I, I don't want to restrict myself, so to speak, you know. So is it a fair assumption that you like to start things but you may, may not necessarily finish them? Oh, I guess I don't, I don't entirely agree with that. Uh, yeah, the, the idea is sometimes get started and then you get to the realisation that, that it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. That's the only instance it wouldn't be finished. If it's something else, then I would finish it. It's sort of a bit of a mix there, really. It's just about the, which are the good ideas and which are the bad ideas. Okay. So, but, you know, definitely, definitely need to focus and not, you know, and rely on my, you know, the people around me just to help me get get that focus. Mm -hmm. So I do finish things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So strategically. You tend to always make the right decision, and you always aim to win, or out, out, out or um, outscore your rivals. So you're always out to, to win a game of golf, aren't you? Very competitive, mate. Football, cranky, cranky. I still play soccer now at uh, the merry old age of 42, mm -hmm. and we lost tonight 4-3, and I was very upset. And yes, it's very, I've got a very competitive nature. Okay, so let's uh, tie a couple of things in here. Strategically thinking, you and your missus are driving into a town that you don't know and she's driving. How do you give her directions and how do you help her see the big picture? Oh, she doesn't drive. That's a start. <laughs> 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 That's a hard question. Um, uh, she, oh, I, I, guess, I guess I would just be open to all, everything, really. I, you know, you go into somewhere you don't know and you, you just you go down the main street and you know, I would observe and take everything in and, and base any move forward on that, really. I wouldn't be giving her direction as such. I'm a bit more spontaneous, um, yeah. I believe, than a strategist when it comes to something like that. It, it would very much be, you know, led by my the environment around me. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a direction giver in that instance. Okay. Well, can you think of an idea, work-related or relationship-related, where you've found a way to communicate strategically, so combining those two strengths to benefit your success or the success of a project or something along those lines? Oh, yeah. I, I, the, my current project I'm doing now for Burley Tourism, you know, I've got, I'm dealing with a, a board of four property managers that are very relaxed about the way things are done and there's no real systems in place. So, you know, initiating a CRM to help me with, you know, all the work that was involved with that project was quite quite a big task but, and they just didn't really get it, um, you know, and then I had to convince them why and when I showed them the finished effect and the order that I'd created from the CRM in moving the project forward, they, they realised it wasn't time wasted, you know. But it was a real big hurdle for me in the beginning. Okay. Is that is that a good example? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well the, the the strategic theme uh, tends to create alternative ways to move forward, and it tends to suggest that when you're given any scenario, that you can quickly spot relevant patterns and issues. Is that a fair assumption? Yeah, very much so. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, so, and dealing with those people as well is, is sort of it was a really good learning curve to know how to deal with them moving forward as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can eliminate the distractions and you can help people much. gain a clearer understanding of what's happening and why it's happening, yeah? Yeah. You know, and these are the people that pay my invoices every week, you know. I, I, you know if, I'm not afraid to tell, tell somebody even if in, in authority if, if I don't think they're right and I can prove that they're not <laughs> they're wrong. <laughs> I'm yeah. not afraid to do so. Yeah. To get my point across, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very open to I'm very open to feedback coming in from different individuals, and and I'll take it all on board. But I will express myself, um, and usually, 
implement something to prove that I'm right. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, I'll even put my hand up and tell them I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So you're sort of starting to blend the the, the communication strategically and then you're starting to include your team or your work colleagues or your suppliers, I suppose, into the decisions that you want to make. Pretty much, yeah. You know, yeah. try and put things in layman terms, keep it nice and simple. You know, recognize recognize the, the points. I'll give you an example. Um, we're building a, an accommodation booking platform for um, property managers at the moment, and you know, I'm not going to. You don't have to be. You don't have to complicate things. I just try and keep it nice and simple, and what they need to hear. You know. Mm. to get them on side. Mm. They needed ideas, man. Well, ideas, man, and like I say, I, 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 reckon, I reckon probably that out of my 32 member properties that are, that are with Billy Tourism, you know, I reckon each of them I'll win them over within about two or three minutes of meeting them. Yep. Woo woo. Yes, that's that's the woo. <laughs> the woo. The woo the woo should be number one. <laughs> I'll tell you that for nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, we we like to think of the top five, not necessarily as a one through to five. It's yeah. we explain it like a five pointed star, and it's yeah. very circular. So at any time it rotates, and, and you we want to focus on you utilizing all five at once or separately. So there's no one holding more priority than the other. And I suppose that goes back to not focusing on your lesser strengths, it's just purely these are your strengths, there's no order, let's let's just focus on. I think I think I think the the conversation we had last week is is I've I do I'm typically that I look at my weaknesses and try and improve them. Um, I, I think I think I combine my strengths quite well. Mm -hmm. um, and I even gave my son, my eighteen year old a bit of a read of, of the of, of the uh, the survey I did and he was blown away by yeah. Top five. He's like he just kept pointing out all these different things that were spot on and giving me examples, you know. So awesome. Yeah. How old's your son? Eighteen. Awesome, awesome, mate. You should get him to do it himself. It um, yeah. it'll give him a way to look at things, you know. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. If you want, I'll I'll find another half an hour and have a chat with him if you like. Cool. But, Sounds um, good, mate. Moving on, moving on. We've got to include him in it, in all of these sort of things. So that's, that's a good. Right. Segue into uh, the next strength. So I'll bring Donna back in and she can go through Includer with you. How does that sound? Okay, no worries. Thanks, Danny. And um, actually, just to just to add, it was something that came to mind when you guys were talking just then. Um, when you would use the example about um, strategic and Jeff driving with his wife, um, and then use it, use the same example for strategic in terms of work. Um, one of the things with having these strengths is that sometimes you can learn to turn them up or turn them down when required. So perhaps the strategic strength is more better used when you're at work, whereas when you're at home, it's something that you're able to kind of tone down a little bit. Because I almost, I almost completely tune out from it at home. <laughs> I'll be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> That's what threw me when you asked that question about driving through a tower. I couldn't relate to it, you know, because, you know. Yeah, well, that's, definitely, that's definitely, I definitely switch on on and off my strength, and, and like I say, it's it's the environment I'm in that dictates where I take things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that that can be for all of us at times as well. So um, I'm guessing that's why it was a bit more relatable when you were speaking about it in a work context. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Um. All right. So we'll move on to Inclusa. Um. So since we're on the table. Um, I'm just going to go with the table and just get you to have a read of that and let me know if there's anything there that you feel, you know, really sits well with you or doesn't sit so well with you. Um, so in terms of I am being aware, uh, sorry, aware of exclusion and understand repercussions, so the repercussions of not including someone, would you say that that's? Yes, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of like overdo it a little bit, <laughs> to be honest. I'm always. Yeah, in, oh well, I, you know, everyone has different groups of friends, and I'm very aware of all my friends. And I don't want to upset somebody by not inviting somebody else. You know what I mean? So I, whenever I have a get together, it's usually this whole group of random people. It's not. Yeah. It's not. It's, I guess that's where the networking side of things comes from. 
now I'm just yeah. used to a very diverse range of people in a room. And I definitely, I definitely include everybody at times when, and I, I, it's quite funny is when, and when I don't get included in something I'm aware that's going on, I take it quite personally. At times, mm. when I know, oh, I know it's not personal. I have to sort of bang myself on the head and say, "Stop it." So, so how do you how do you deal with those situations when you find? Oh, I, I use it. I use event to the wife. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, it's been hard. I, I came out of a working environment, working for a five star resort where there's 200 people, and we're very social. And obviously, since I finished there, the, oh, I see things going on, and I sort I sort of think to myself, well, you know, where was my invite? You know. Out of sight, out of mind. You know, that's that's the reality of it. And the truth is, they're probably they were my they were my work colleagues, not my close friends. Yeah. And sometimes I have to think to myself, and I use event to the wife. I say, oh, you know, the boys are playing golf, such and such. I'm a bit gutted I didn't get an invite. But then I think about it, and, and she normally puts me right and says, don't worry about it. They're not your mates. They're just your colleagues you used to work with. Yeah. You know. So I do have to. That is one of the things I I. Um, I guess that's the woo side of things when you when you sort of take things personally mm, a little bit. Yeah. I'm a and bit emotional. Yeah, a bit of an emotional train wreck. <laughs> yeah, no, it is absolutely. It, the include and the woo comes in together, and that's very much a woo thing for you to yeah. to be recognised. Mm. Um, okay, so in terms of the I will and doing, um, should the gap between the have and have not included. How do you feel about that? Uh, I'm trying to sort of think what it actually means. Um, uh, so, have and have not. I mean, what, what, I mean, what, what what's a reference? What's that reference to? I mean, I'm trying to think from a personal because I because I generally get what I want. <laughs> so. yeah. <laughs> there's, no, there's no gap between have and have not. You know, if I want something, I generally get it. Yeah, so you're, you're pretty much is that, an answer, is that an answer in its own right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, there's any answers fine here. Um, yeah. So you would say that you're always pretty much, you're always including including people in everything that you do, whether it be pretty, work life or home life. Yeah, work life, home life, social life. You know, every time we go out for dinner, I'm always thinking who we can invite to come with us. You know, much to the detriment of the wife and the kids who want a bit of family time with just the five of us. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Cool. And so, as an includer, so one of the things is contribution. So bringing a high level of tolerance, acceptance of diversity. Do you find that? Pretty much. That's the, oh, that's probably the statement I agree with most out of. The points listed. Okay. And why why do you think that sits with you best? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's that that ever never ending quest to meet new people, that type of thing, mm -hmm. you know. And a very diverse group of people, you know, you know, culturally and yeah. You know. Which very much relates to the next one being the requirement. There's always room for everyone. I always see the best in everybody. I always find the strengths in everybody, and you know, if there's a downside, I, I tend to focus on the good side and say, you know, oh, don't be like that. You know, he's really good at this, or he's a really nice guy, and you know, just just the way I way I am, really. You know, and that's probably again why I take 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 things to heart when uh, it's not reciprocated to a certain degree. Yeah. Not that that happens a lot. It's just that when it does, I take it personally and and that type of thing because I am open to everyone. A bit of an open book. It's sometimes yeah. probably not the best thing to go to do in the world, but such is life. That's who I am. I can't not be who I am. So yeah. so I sleep well at night. Once again, that's your communication and your really coming in as well. If you're yeah. in so that's very much yeah. Um, and that moves on to the next one as well. You know, the you love the you have the values of everyone being the same, integrating people, and the opposite to that being that um, generally people who have included as a strength don't like clicks. 
um, 16 clicky groups that don't allow others to be included. Would you would you say that to me? Oh, most definitely. Hate clicks. Hate them. Yeah. You know, I take great pleasure out of introducing a couple of people who I believe will get on, um, and, and quite often good friendships come out of those introductions. Yeah. So once you know, again, integrating. De definitely not about the click for me. Definitely not. I, I hate the click. It drives me nuts. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so generally as an includer, um, includers ask lots of questions and tend to study the responses. Do you find that that's something that you do when you're out and about? Uh, yes yeah, so and no. What are, what am I? Yeah, uh, I do to a certain degree. I, 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 don't, I try not to be too invasive in the first instance. Mm -hmm. It's really just very softly, softly and, you know, just try and suss somebody out first. Yeah, you know, um, it's just basic stuff, you know, ask them about themselves, what they do, family, that type of thing. Yeah. Now, ease my way in, you know, and it's usually reciprocated. They ask you the same questions and, you know, you've you got kids who are the same age or, or the same year at school or, you know, same sex children. You know, you know, you, you've got some, you got a talking point to start things off. Uh, and it just, I think all our relationships just evolve from that very basic beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't think I bombard with too many questions. It's more just the backwards and forwards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I did notice that you said there that you, you do ask some light questions and then suss them out a little bit. So um, would you say then that you are you are kind of having a look at what their response is so that you know how to best communicate with them and I guess how to also woo them? Um, yeah, probably, if I'm honest. Yeah. It's not it's a subconscious thing, it's not something I consciously do, but when I when I think about all the all the strengths that you guys have listed and, and I've read through them several times, I probably do do it for that reason, if the yeah. truth be known. Um, but again, generally everyone I speak to leads to some sort of relationship, be it friends or working relationship. I don't. I don't discriminate any, against anybody. I guess it's important. I don't discriminate against anybody because their response is to me. Um, yeah. It's more just so I'm comfortable and, and can know what I can share as well. To yeah, yeah. That makes sense. It goes back to what you were saying before about creating those boundaries and when you're listening to their responses and making an assessment based on that, you're able to best see how far you can go in terms of what questions you're asking, how you can communicate with that person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So, who have you helped, or have you helped somebody become a part of a group? Part of a group? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, very much so. I, I've i coached a lot myself, soccer and stuff like that, and, you know, part of, you know, I coached under 18s at Broadbeach two years ago, part of that, you have, you have, you know, you have 20 kids that don't really know each other, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I generally, I, again, just try and get everybody involved. <laughs> I can't believe how much, how much these things keep propping up when I think back. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's very important to integrate everybody into a group so they all are comfortable with each other, play for each other, play for themselves, you know. And I've, yeah. I've coached several teams um, over the last... 14 years, so yeah, most definitely on a regular basis. Yeah. And you, you also organise golf tours, don't you? I think yeah, golf tours, yeah, yeah, golf tours, golf events. Uh, I have a networking business called SEQ Business Golf Network, which is a um, it's like your typical B and I breakfast, but on the golf course basically. You just play golf, come in, talk about their businesses after, and I usually instigate that networking process after the event, and you know. I'll make it a little bit light-hearted to make people feel comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> again, again, more, more of these strengths creeping out that I, I didn't really put much focus on or take for granted, I guess. I guess your strengths you take for granted, and I guess that goes back to what Danny said about um, not focusing on your weaknesses, just focusing on your strengths. You know, I kind of taken all the strengths for granted, and it's just a part and parcel of my everyday. Hence, the focus on the weakness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And isn't it funny, the more and more you speak about it, the more stories that pop up in your mind and then you start to think back to where you've used these things and it just becomes very clear, doesn't it? 
Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I, it was a little bit unusual to start with this process when I, we started talking. But as as we're talking more, it's it's everything's just falling into place. Like, you know, I can think of so many examples of different things that you've asked me. It's it's incredible. So. Mm. So one kind of the confronting. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it's it definitely helps you to learn a lot more about yourself and how you communicate with the world. Mm. Um, so one of the things about an includer as well is that um, whilst they really love to include others, um, they also don't like to be made to feel like an outsider or to make others feel like an outsider. Um, and they generally will tend to draw people towards them because they are able to include them, which I guess also um, comes into play with the woo um, and wanting to woo that person over. Yeah. Very yeah. so. I don't let myself be excluded. <laughs> that, that's what, That's the truth. I don't. I don't let myself be excluded. You know. I guess there's occasion when it's a new group. You know. Again, I probably thinking back. I, I there's a certain amount of observation just to, just to see where I can interject. Just maybe to introduce myself to a new group of people. Or yeah. Well, I'm very. I'm quite strategic when it comes to that type of thing. To be honest. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so before we move on to the next one and I introduce Danny back in, I just want to check in with you and just see if there's any questions or anything that you had um, in relation to anything that we've discussed about in Pluto. No, 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 it's fine. Like I say, it's, um, I'm finding it easier as we progress, to be honest. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, Danny, did you want to chime in again and Absolutely. the next track? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's great to hear that uh, we're all just past halfway and you're really starting to sink your teeth into these strengths, mate. It's making sense and clear? Yeah. It is, mate. I'm beginning to think more and more I need to, I need to sell myself better by, you know, focusing on these more so, like, yeah. big time. So the These're ideas the are really starting to flow. Oh, most definitely. Great segue. Great segue. <laughs> now, I'm going to pre preface this. Ideation, obviously, as I said before, is very close to me at number three. But we've also got a bit of a uh, an honourable guest listening in. Um, it's, it surprised me that she's actually listening, and her number one strength is ideation. And why I say it's uh, it's an honour, because actually today's her birthday. So um, happy birthday to Linda. She's listening. She can't talk because she's on mute. But, um, happy birthday, Linda. Thanks for listening. <laughs> but, um, what what she explains ideation is, which you know, she's basically the mentor that introduced me to strengths profiling, and having ideation as her number one strength, the best I think the best analogy she gave me was, it's like firecrackers going off in your head, and they're just shooting off in all directions, and and it's hard to keep track of every single one. They're just they're just flowing continuously. Is can you see that? I, I, Danny, I cannot agree any more, mate. That's what I'm saying before. Where I lose my focus sometimes because I, I feel like I feel exactly that. I just yeah, my, yeah. my head's exploding with ideas ordinarily. You know, yeah. I, my current my current three day contract we have now was an idea that came as a light bulb moment in a conversation, and within two days it was actioned and the project was underway. That's just just the way it is with me, you know. Sometimes they they, they they come off, sometimes they don't. But the, the ideas are there, and it it sort of drives me nuts a little bit <laughs> at times yeah. as well, you know. Yeah, yeah it's it, to, for me, it's about honing in that skill and and picking and choosing the best ideas and and starting to identify which ones work for you and not procrastinating. Um, and there's a bit of an analogy I like to run with, and you know, if you want to use it, by all means, go for it. But there's certain levels of information that we take on board every split second. I think it's something around 2 million um, concepts or ideas every second or two seconds or something. And we chunk that down uh, to something like 64,000 and eventually we get down to 132. And um, the most of us can remember seven chunks, I think the number is. <clears throat> and the way I like to explain it for us that have ideation in our top five is for me, it's like having a whole bunch of little houses inside our brain. And every house has two windows and a door. And um, when we start to learn something new or we, we create a new idea, we tend to open those windows. 
and we can only open so many windows in our mind. Um, so if you start focusing on something that's just not important, you open that window and because you can only have seven or so windows open at a time, chances are you're going to let some of the stuff that means something or is valuable go by. Uh, but when you start to learn which windows to open, you've then got the debate over which doors to actually open. And that's where um, the coaching of these strengths and narrowing your focus down to what you want to target allows you to open the doors to the information that you really want to use. Um, so if you can only open seven doors at a time, um, really harnessing your focus and focusing on your strengths allows you to really focus on the ideas that work. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, most definitely. I, 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 you know, it's funny you've just explained it like that. I, I've been in the same situation myself where I, there's an explosion happening all the time with ideas, and my most constructive ideas come from a, a conversation, and it's a spontaneous idea that, that that will ignite in a conversation, and I come up with a solution right there and then on the spot. You know, um, you know, I don't, I don't don't get me wrong, I don't blurt it out all in one go. It's you know it. it it will sit with me momentarily, and I'll, I'll I'll go through the thought process, and I won't deliver the idea until I'm, I, I you know, I can back the idea up all the way through. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I think I, I think in the last maybe three or four years, I've definitely definitely honed that to a certain degree. Yeah. Before that, I just blurted everything out. <laughs> the ridiculous and the good. Yeah. And is it right in saying that when you're at school, probably teachers and parents told you to stop daydreaming and, and stop focusing on the unrealistic? Yeah, pretty much. Always mm. dreaming. Mm. Yeah. I, I, you know, I always dreaming. I mean, I, the back, my background growing up with single parent council estate in the northwest of England, mate. I think most most of us are dreamers in, with, with that sort of um, childhood. You know, you always dream, dreaming of bigger and better and. You know, I've, I've, you know, I also made my own look all the way from the age of 17 when I left home. I've never been given anything, so. Mm. Mm. Awesome, awesome. Well, if you don't mind, I'll read a little paragraph that I like to keep close to me, and I think it might come close to resonating with you. Um, and this can probably apply to you, but I, I, this was one of my profiles, so let's see if it sort of sits with you. Chances are good that you tradition, traditionally figure out what you need to do better by evaluating data, evidence, or facts. Driven by your talents, you want people to see you as a winner, as number one, or as the very best in various activities. Being quite sensitive to what others think of you probably is a powerful motivating force that usually works to your advantage. It's very likely that you typically generate inventive ideas for new projects, especially those that require upgrading things. When you're challenged to be an innovative thinker, you feel valued. Instinctively, you regard yourself as logical and reasonable. You spontaneously reduce mechanisms, processes, proposals, ideas, or formulas to their basic parts. You figure out how the pieces interrelate. Your discoveries tell you why something does or does not function the way it should. Because of your strengths, you resist being moved to tears, especially when others can see them. You really wish you did a better job of containing your emotions. How does that sit? That's that's it's perfectly. And that's what my son said as well. He said that's definitely you, Dad. So, yeah, um, definitely, definitely that last one really rings true. Uh, that last line. You really wish you did a better job of containing your emotions. Mm. Sometimes I do. Yeah, frustration, all the different emotions. You know. I, I, I sometimes get frustrated with others if they don't see what I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah. You know, that type of thing. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely all rings true. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a saying in the coaching world um, the map is not the territory. Have you heard that? I haven't, no. Basically, suggests that um, everyone sees the world differently. And what you see as the map or the street directory or whatever isn't necessarily what is on the table or, or what other people see. Um, would, that, would, that, would that relate to thinking outside the box, that type of thing? Um, is, that, is it similar? Is it similar? Could do. That's, could how do. I, that's how I describe what you just said. You know? Okay. Well, there you go in itself. That's the way you're interpreting what I said and yeah. I, I interpret it differently, so it's spot on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I guess for someone with ideation, because you've got so many 
different vast ideas, it just uh, heightens that thought that you, you, it seems to make sense that other people can see those ideas, but quite often they can't. Yeah, very much so. Mm. So back to the table. Um, you Again, I'm guessing, mate, the way you're flowing through these tables, everything seems to resonate with you. You don't seem yeah. to be unaffected by ambiguity and risk of innovation. You're always thinking outside the box. You bring new and fresh perspectives. You need freedom to explore possibility without limitations. You love coming up with something brand new. You hate doing what you've always done. I think we've heard that before. Yeah. Um, you know, you're creative. You love working with things new. Um, but an important one is this basement comment is that you're impractical. So again, coming up with way too many ideas and, and people just think it's unrealistic. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely right. And it's, it's like with the creative creativity, you know, a lot of what I do at the moment involves my very good friend who I'll introduce to the group at some point, who is your typical project manager, does all the, mm. you know, crosses all the dots and T's and, and, I, and I'm, the idea, I'm just an ideas guy and he helps me sort of turn that lump of clay into a working model type thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, do, I am impractical at times, you know, just caught up in the idea. Which, which, okay. which I say, I, saying that I'm, I, I, is, is, is something I've improved vastly in the last couple of years. Okay. So is that is he just an an idea in your mind? Is he an imaginary friend or is he real, mate? No, no, he's, he's re real. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's, I'm he, kidding. He, no, he's, he's he's my best mate, and you know he's he's a, he's he, he almost does what you guys do. He's he goes in and comes up with business solutions and stuff. And, yeah. He's a web developer as well, and you know, and quite often an idea will ring true with him and his skill set, and we combine to, to, to do what we do on a weekly basis, you know. Awesome. Early tourism being one of them, you know. So, yeah. Love it, mate. Love it. But that's that's that... where the sounding. That's where the sounding board sort of um, sounding board idea comes in. You know, he's that person I bounce a lot of stuff off. You know. Yep. So you work together or purely friends? Or uh, purely, purely, it's probably my best friend because he expects, he expects the least, I can't get my words out, expects the least of me. Mm -hmm. He never expects anything of me, basically. He, he's always there to listen. If I've got a good idea, tell me it's a good idea. If it's a crap idea, don't tell me it's a crap idea. But a, a lot of my friends are quite demanding. Yep. You know? I don't think I put demands on other people as far as my friendships are concerned. I'm very much somebody who does something for everybody else. Always, if a phone rings, it's a guy I'm not, not seen for a few weeks. It's usually because he wants something, you know, that type yeah. of thing. I, I guess that's just the circle I'm in and, and the career I've had so far. It's, sort of, it's happened that way. Justin's different because mm. there's no expectation and never wants anything. So it's a good friend to have. Mm. So he generally accepts you for who you are. Pretty much, yeah. Hundred percent, like good with the bad, the ugly. Tells me when I when I go and have a whinge about the wife or my day. You know, sounding block, it, sounding board if I need it. Mm. You know, brings brings things in perspective when I need that input as well. You know, mm -hmm. so just a just a very good friend. Uh, professionally and personally, you know. Okay. So while you're a great communicator, does that make him a good listener or is it both ways? Both ways. He's a great listener and good communicator. Listening listening for me is something I, I work on on a daily basis because of the ideas. Sometimes I get a little bit carried away <laughs> with what I'm saying and don't listen to what others are saying. It's not intentional. It's subconscious. I normally get consumed by the idea. Yes, very good stuff. The only way I, the only way I can explain it that makes sense to me. Mm. So quite possibly, the ideas start to take over when you're listening to people. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievably so. You know, the, the contract I have now with Early Tourism was like literally 90 seconds into a chat and I was selling him something else, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it just, it just, it just evolved, it was like, 
he told me about a problem he's having with a marketing person, and I, this whole idea just exploded right there on the spot, and you know, pretty much within within a week, had gone to a three-day week contract, and you know, same same with my car, mate. You know, there's not many people who can inv invent invent themselves a job out of an idea. You know, yeah. I've got a com company car because I wanted a company car. And I threw an idea at a company, and he's 24 hours later, he said, "Come and pick your car up." You know, mm -hmm. it's, and that was me going, you know, this would be cool. <laughs> I wonder if we, well, you've seen the car, mate. <laughs> it's like, wonder if I can pull this off. You know, a yeah. uh, 25-minute meeting with a car company, and I've talked them into a new car. Mm. This is what I do. So I'm guessing on that blank canvas that you've got inside your mind, or it probably no longer blank, that when it started at the beginning of this call, um, you're starting to create some ideas on where this could go. As an individual, if you understood your strengths better as you are through this call, you'll be able to, to represent yourself or communicate to your clients, to your family a lot better. What do you think your friends and customers would gain from understanding your strengths better? Uh, I think um, I think my enthusiasm for my ideas and, when I, and the way I communicate can sometimes create that perception that I'm a bit of a dreamer, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think if I asserted myself more with my strengths, that would be less so. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I think sometimes I, you know, the perception is, oh, it's Flaz. Flaz talks a lot. You know, I do follow through, but yeah, I, I, I'd like them to think differently. And a lot of my friends probably don't even know, don't even know the idea side of things. You know, mm. they just see Flaz as another thing on the go. They probably don't know that I instigated the idea. It was my idea. They're like, oh, that's cool. But yeah. they probably don't know it's me that, that created it in the first instance. You know, I, I wish I, I wish more people knew that. Yeah. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. As I said at the beginning, there's no right or wrong, but quite often I do make the odd mistake. We're going to go into woo in a sec, and we'll explain what woo is if you're not sure. But what I've heard over the last four strengths that we've been addressing, that Three of them, and you did make mention to woo, and I could probably confidently say all four. You're quite confident that you can handle them and manage them very well. And am I correct in saying that your ideas or your ideation is the one that can influence you from the balcony to the basement quicker than any of the other four? Yes. So when you're on fire... Is it the ideation that's kicking out the furthest to lead, but then when you're not doing the best, that's the one that sort of tends to let you down the most? Or is there something yeah, else that shines? Uh, I, I think the I think when I'm firing, firing normally, if, if, if it's a good idea, it leads into something like a project, which I'm doing now, then the reality of that project and the, and the work involved sort of like um, suppresses me a little bit. Mm -hmm. and I have to focus on the actual job at hand and almost quench the ideas to a certain degree. I have to do that. I have to sort of hold them back because I need to get the job done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So definitely get subdued when, when, when I'm in full swing with an idea, despite, so despite another million ideas a day that, that pop in there, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I can describe it. Yeah, spot on. Spot on. All right, well, what we'd like to do to, to sort of wrap it up and round it off is we'll bring Donna in and we're both going to explain woo to you. Um, as we called, I don't know if you noticed, the, the theme tonight was um, assured connections. Um, basically, Donna has self-assurance as one of her highly ranked strengths and I have connectedness. Um, so we're going to learn and teach and coach a little bit more about Woo. Now, are you familiar with the term Woo and what the acronym stands for, Jeff? Yes. I read the, um, the Gallup report that came through quite extensively several times. <laughs> yeah. 
Mike, I like to be prepared. Ah, okay. Especially, especially when I saw there was going to be people listening in. So. <laughs> So, oh, that's good. That was strange. Just keep puffing back in, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> so winning, winning other over, winning others over is is woo. Basically, what does that mean to you? Before you knew that, and, and after you, now that you know it. Um, I get. I guess. I guess it sort of goes back just to my personality traits with you know communication and introducing myself to new people. It's it, uh, it's really important important that to me that I'm always. Helping <laughs> is probably the best way to put it. And doing something in yeah. some capacity, you know. And sometimes, sometimes that takes over a little bit, you know. And probably my family suffers more because of my <laughs> obsession. <laughs> trying to think, trying to think of a word, you know. Just trying to connect and and you know, um, bring people over. I guess is is, is exactly the, the, the term I'm looking for. Sometimes it, it, it takes over a bit too much, but um, but yeah, definitely definitely always trying to win people over, you know, get to know people, you know, and, and connections come from that. Opportunity comes from that, you know, those, those types of relationships is probably the driving force behind it. It's not what I can get out of a relationship, but certainly opportunities come out of relationships. It's not what I do. It's not why I do it. But things just tend to happen, you know. Whether it's I'm helping somebody with something they've got, they've got an idea I can contribute to. All of those reasons, I guess, is why I'm. I do, I do, I do connect with people quite easily, and I'm quite open as well. You know, you probably noticed that, Danny, when we met last week. You know. Well, having com know. communication and includer is just going to boost up that woo, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. What about you? What do you think, Donna, with self-assurance coming in with woo? How do you combine with with people with woo, and and how can you influence Jeff? Um, yeah, just listening in, um, it was like I said earlier on. Um, I can definitely see how those strengths all are coming together in terms of when you're meeting somebody and you're breaking the ice with them, and you're really wanting to include them into the group. Um, and because you haven't met them before, you're, you're wooing them and you're wanting to create that relationship there and that friendship there with them. Um, so I can definitely see how it's how they all come together. Um, yeah. I actually, I'm just interested. So how is it that you find that you woo others? Um, I guess I, I guess there's not barriers for me. Just, just touching on on the relationship I mentioned earlier. You know, I, I'm a I'm a big Liverpool fan. You know, and I talked to a Manchester United fan in a barber shop. You know, you can't think of two sets of soccer fans that are more <laughs> opposed to each other, but it doesn't bother me. You know, I use that as an icebreaker. Say, so mate, shame about the shirt. Never met the guy before. You know, I've done that on a lot of occasions. I just I just don't have barriers. I just, you know, I, I'll be walking. And someone will walk alongside me, and I'll ask them how the day's going. It's just, just what I do. Uh, it's subconscious. I just, I'm just a talker. So, no, no inhibitions. Don't. I will talk to anybody. We'll talk to, in any group, no matter the size. Um, just enjoy it, I guess. <laughs> I enjoy the connection. I'm guessing you're one of those people who couldn't walk into a party and not talk to anyone, then, huh? No. Oh, I, you know, oh, I just, you know, I just can't, can't do it, you know. And, you know, and the, and the cool thing about that is, you know, I generally tend to find when I walk into somewhere now, I, I normally bump into somebody I know. <laughs> the wife always gives me a hard time about it, you know. You know, everybody. I don't really know everybody. I'm just friendly and I talk to people. And <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that is why they remember me, you know, because because I'm friendly and I'm open, you know. Yeah, I've got to ask, I, I've got a pet hate, mate, and I'm guessing someone who has these strengths that you've got, how do you handle it when you say hello to someone and they just walk past and almost ignore you? Oh, just don't worry about it, mate. They're lost, mate, at the end of the day. You know, yeah. They've not, they've not, not uh, talked to me or, or responded. You know, they've missed out. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how I feel about it, you know. 
Okay. Well, on the, on the other way, on the other, on the other shoes, on the other foot, and I don't know yeah. your, your wife, obviously, or your um, partner. How yeah. did she woo you? She didn't. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, well, the wife and I were good friends first, you see. We were good friends, and it developed into what it is, you know. One not one day, I just went mm, and told her, and we've been together ever since. I think. <laughs> That's the only way I could explain it. But I, I don't know. I, I just, you know, I just, it's very basic for me, mate. It's, 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 it's not hello, or how are you going, and it generally goes from there, mate, you know. I, I can walk into, you know, I could walk into a bar in surfers and just grab you guys and, you know, I, I, no no problem. You know, I use, again, I probably would, would there be something within the group that would trigger that response, that, that, a, a, you know, ability for me to say something and say hello. Mm. You know, it might be a couple of guys who are wearing a Liverpool shirt. I say, nice shirt, nice. You know, you get, you get talking about the football. You know, and it, it evolves from there. So there's always a trigger to some degree, even if it's eye contact. Something something as simple as eye contact. Hey, how you going? How's things? You know, then they speak back. They might be English. You know, oh, where are you from? You know, that type of thing. You know, it's it really just evolves naturally, organically, I, w I would guess is the term. Mm. Yeah, but it's not all, don't get me wrong, <laughs> not everybody I meet wants to break out into a, give me their life story, um, but generally speaking, I don't have any issues and there's no boundaries for, for me as well, you know. Don't get me wrong, I won't just go and interrupt somebody, it's usually a, a you know, it's usually a, a, a nod or a low that, that instigates anything, you know. Or a professional relationship that evolves into a friendship. Yeah, mm. Mm. it's just the way I roll. <laughs> <laughs> but Donna, Donna, when it comes to self-reflection and, and relationship coaching, where do you see woo and actually the rest of these other four strengths fitting in with um, with Jeff and how she how he can improve his business, his relationship, so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, in terms of the strengths that you have, I definitely think that um, being able to have the open lines of communication that you have is really important in both aspects, um, both with your partner and in a work context as well. Um, and being able to to go in there and to woo both your partner and like I said, work colleagues as well, and put those two together is just an amazing strength to be able to um, to have. Mm. Um, it's quite funny if I don't, you don't mind me saying something. It is like some of the things, the strengths that you tell me I've got. I wish I was better with my wife with, as well. You now we've been mm -hmm. together for 19 years and three kids, and some I'm looking at some of these things now and go, geez, I should do more of that when I'm talking and communicating to the wife and kids, because your everyday home life. Sometimes you, you come home, you've had a, a big day at work, and you, you've had all these conversations and all these ideas, and you know, you know, when you said about getting up in the morning and, and being in a bad mood, you know, quite often the days are strained, and I'm in a bad mood when I come home, and they cop it. Not abusive, but I probably don't communicate as well as I should do, that type of thing. So, yes, taking a long, hard look at myself right now. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's actually kind of like what I was saying to you before, um, in terms of sometimes these strengths that you have can be dialed up and dialed down. So kind of think of it like um, the volume on your radio station. That sometimes you have your radio up really loud, and so that's perhaps when you're going to work and you're out and you're networking and all the rest of it, and then when you come home you tend to dial it down a little bit because mm. you're at home, you're relaxed, you're in your own mm. space, and you're feeling safe within your environment. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, you know. uh, and I think that, that you know, you've got the knock-on effect of when you've been out and doing your day and doing all those things, you know, it, you know, it doesn't stop, you know, be it emails, text messages, social media, that type of thing. You know, quite often I'm, the wife's talking to me and I'm still, my mind's still in another place and she has to ask me a question twice and she gets cranky and, you know, which is, which is, which is warranted, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I probably should tone it down a bit during the day so I've got a bit more to give later in the day, you know? Mm. And, well, I guess even just being aware of the fact that, um, you know, when you go home that you're able to 
be able to include your wife in some of the ideas that you come up with during the day and communicate that to her and um, just be able to really just woo her when you get home with all of mm. the things that have happened throughout your day and sharing that with her and just really including her with that on. Yeah, it does happen. I mean, quite often I'll, it might be an idea that I've followed through with in some capacity and I'm down the track with that idea and it's becoming a reality and then I go, oh, you know, I remember I told you about this and I never told her. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which is, uh, again, probably something that, that needs to change. Yes. Well, now now that you, you've made these um, connections, though, that's better able to happen. Yeah. Now you're able to strategically think about how you can be turning it up and turning it down where you need to. Yeah. I think it's, um, yeah, I, like you said, you, it's about focused on your strengths. You know, I, 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 come, I come on and focus on all the weaknesses and I'll go, oh, I must improve this, I need to do that. And, if I if I carried on just focusing on my strengths, then that would show up in all aspects of what I'm doing. Yeah. Is my yeah. thought process. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly right. Beautiful. Beautiful said. Very nicely said. I, I think um, we're coming close to the end. It's coming up to 10:30. We like to try and keep it within an hour and a half. And we're going to ask uh, if it's all right with you, Jeff, a couple of the coaches, if they've got any other questions. But I just want to ask. Donna beautifully said the uh, the way you complement Jeff's strengths is phenomenal. Um, I can relate exactly to what you're saying. It's obvious that self-assurance is a massive strength of yours, and how you can talk to Jeff as an individual, and no matter what your input, we all seem to learn from what you've got to say on a max maximised level. Um, so. If we've got a few people left, it's getting late. Has anyone got any questions out there? If you want to just type them in. Um, Nick, are there any questions there? Uh, nothing come in yet. Um, nothing personal, just purely if they wanted to compliment or add to um, any of the strengths that we've got here, because obviously we often share these strengths. Uh, I don't know if I've shared the, the numbers or the figures with you, Jeff. Um, no. But going back to the... The, the table with the 34 strengths there. Um, is it one in 280,000 people will have the same top five strengths as you and one in 33 million will have them in the same order. So the chance okay. of finding someone in Australia with the same top five in the same order is highly unlikely. Um, okay. And I know you've done DISC and, you know, you basically get categorised in four energies and, you know, your yeah. high D, high C or something like that, chances are, that, you know, every fourth person or every 16th person is going to have um, similar sort of energies. But, um, yeah, that's the difference there. Um, questions, guys, anything? Or are we going to let uh, Jeff go to bed? Um, or even, um, Jeff, do you have any questions? Yeah, absolutely. I was going to get to that. Oh, I, I, I guess no questions really. It's, it's obviously been very insightful listening and, and seeing the table in front of me, uh, and so many personality traits that I can relate to. So, you know, I'm definitely, um, I guess, I guess, looking at the personal things I do is is definitely definitely give me a few ideas. You know, I, I tend to be a little bit self-critical at times about my weaknesses. I definitely don't think I will be after this. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm full of myself at the best of times, but I'm also very aware of my shortcomings. <laughs> um, perhaps I won't be as negative about those moving forward. Um, so yeah, no, no, no real questions. I'm sure as I absorb it all over the coming days, I'll, you know, things will crop up, and I'm sure that you guys will give me some feedback. So yeah, cool. if and when they do, um, but definitely, definitely gonna try and change things personally. Yeah. You know? Try and try and not let my day influence how I am when I go home. Mm. You know, try and keep those those qualities, especially the woo, for one for, for home life as well. Yeah. Yeah. On on that note, I'll add a couple of things, and it's it's quite important. And I trust you'll listen to this and 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 take it for the importance that it is. What uh, Donna and I have actually done. Have you heard of NLP? Yes. Yep. 
We've been embedded... linguistic programming. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. We've, been, we've embedded some thoughts and ideas and concepts into your mind that may ev evoke some emotions and feelings over you maybe the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah. You're a strong guy. I'm sure you'll work it out. But quite often, some people can fluctuate between the highs and lows over the next sort of couple of weeks and take it the wrong way or take it the right way, however you want to look at it. But what we strongly advise, and obviously I'm around and you can contact me, but what I'd probably strongly arise, uh, um, advise, considering you sort of touched on the fact of the difference between your family life and your work life, is that I'll, outside of this call, I'll give you Donna's contact details. And as a relationship coach, it might be an idea just to touch base with her maybe twice over the next fortnight. Um, if you've got yeah. any questions, obviously you can throw it through the Facebook group and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But on top of that, mate, you've just touched the tip of the iceberg here. We've, we've What we like to call it with, within the Gallup space is we name, we claim, and we aim our strengths. And what we've basically done tonight is name them. Um, and it's going to take a little bit of time before you start to claim them and really start to own them. And one of the questions that actually just came through is, can you think of a way over the next week or so before you talk to Donna, how you will go out there and really name your five strengths? How, how I'll name them? Yeah, name and claim. Uh, I, I, think, I think I'll, I already do claim them. Um, but, but I think more so now. Like I said to you just a minute ago, the, the thing I'm taking out of this is really to stop focusing on the negatives. I mean, personally, in the last six months has been a massive stepping stone for me going out and working for myself. Um, mm -hmm. Never done it. Always chased the salary. Mm -hmm. you know, questioned myself quite hardly. Had a few cries in the shower, that type of thing. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, that's the truth. You know what I mean? So. I just think I think I already I think I already know these strengths. I mean, all it's done is reiterated and 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 let, will let me focus on them. Uh -huh. So I'll definitely I'll, I'll definitely take ownership of them, no doubt whatsoever. Awesome, awesome. Now, can you see how I do, how I do that? I don't know, but <laughs> I will definitely make in a conscious effort to to focus on them. Hmm. Well, that's where well, we can. Already... Go on. Oh, sorry, Dan. Go on, Donna. I was going to say that they're, they're already within you, so it's now more that they've been brought to the surface. Now that you're consciously aware of them, you're able to turn them up and turn them down as you need because they're already there. They're natural to you. There's no and, thought process that really and needs I, to and, and that is exactly right. I was about to say these are the things I've always taken for granted and I've tried to improve other areas so much. And you know what? The other areas just really don't go anywhere. I've always tried to improve. Ultimately, I come back to these strengths, you know. Mm -hmm. So okay. I will um, embrace them. Absolutely. And this this will be me moving forward, basically. Mm. Well, that's that's probably where you're talking about your best mate in relation to your other mates. You got someone who complements your strengths, someone who is accepting in who you are. But then, on the other hand, you've got all these people that seem to want to focus on your weaknesses and they don't value you for, for who you are and what your strengths are. Um, that's life. That's society. And, and unfortunately, we, we are confronted with, do we follow the crowd and focus on our weaknesses or do we hang around that one guy that actually believes in us? Um, I, I think I, I, the more time I spend with the other guy, the better. You yeah. Know, like I said to you before, generally people will want something of me, you mm. know. And uh, that's probably why I take it personally. Mm. When I need something, you know what I mean? Yep. I need some support with, with something I'm doing and every, everyone goes silent, you know. I really struggle to deal with that, you know, on a daily basis. That's the includer. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. want to include like, well, I, well, I include you. Why didn't you include me? It's yeah. like... <laughs> Absolutely. Well, again, it's something I, I worry less and less about every day and it sort of emanates from... Hanging around with the true friend who expects nothing. Awesome. So have you got a lot out of tonight, do you think? Oh, my, yeah, definitely, mate. Uh, yeah. It's like I say, it's funny. It's, it's everything that I already know, you know, but if you actually told me then to spit this out onto paper as it stands now, I would never have been able to do it, you know. Yeah. It's just really highlighted all, all of my strengths. See how yeah. I said strengths and not personality? 
It's okay, bloody. So, <laughs> yeah. so from a, from I an audience... personality, I would have said personality at the beginning of this call, but strength is the first thing that came to mind. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I'll put you on the spot because you're an IDE man. Mm. How can you strategically communicate to the golfers, to Southeast Queensland Networking Group, the decision makers, the, the CEOs that are within that program? How can you communicate to them that doing their strengths profiling is a good thing for their business, for their relationships and for them as individuals? I would just talk to them openly about my experience. Mm. Uh, and my openness and, and what I get out of it, mm. personally. I mean, if if you if you if you can't win someone over with straight honesty, you, you know, um, about about a life experience, then you know, you probably you probably got no chance anyway. You know, to me, it's just about you know, you know, I'll be talking to Scott about this tomorrow, for example. I'll be talking about Justin. I've already spoken to Justin in length about it. He's he's already read this, so you know, and I'll be yeah. I'll be recommending it to anybody because, yeah, you've pretty much translated my personality to a piece of paper. Well, it's worth my strengths. Yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying. I'm just explaining. <laughs> yeah. and that's my way of explaining it. It's uncanny how many points here are valid. You know, I just I probably came into it with a little bit of skepticism, and I I'm not a skeptic anymore. Mm-hmm. And that well, would probably be the way I would describe it to somebody else. You know, it'd be like you know, if you guys haven't done this, you need to try it. It's awesome. It's confronting, and it's it, you know, it, it's opened my mind to look at it myself in a different way. Awesome, awesome, love it, mate, love it. Well, our intentions are is to to share this with as many people as we possibly can because we see value in focusing on your strengths. Um, it's you know, a lot of us come from the education space, from the charity space, from the we're natural givers of knowledge and health and well-being, and we know what it's like to focus on weaknesses and how we're brought up in the world, no matter where you are in the world. Um, and it's been a mission of anyone that's come on board with, you know, both Nick and my company and pretty much anyone involved with Gallup. And we love the response, like you're giving right now, of how empowering it is. Um, mate, thank you very much for participating in, in, in this tonight. We we really learn a lot from you. Uh, obviously, we haven't dealt with someone like you that has these top five strengths in this order. The, the likelihood, as I said, is one in 33 million. But I would like to ask for one favour in return, if you've got a pen and paper there. I have an envelope and a pen. <laughs> That'll do. Yeah. Mate, I'll ask you to write down... Five words. One of them's a hyphenated word, so it could be six words. Um, tell me when you're ready, and I'll read them out to you. Okay. Yeah. Relator. R e l a t o r. Yeah. Self assurance. That's the hyphenated word. Yeah. Individualization. Yeah. Input. Jeez, that's a long word. <laughs> <laughs> spell it with an S, spell it with a Z. I'm, used to, I'm, I'm used to pushing keys away, not writing. <laughs> Input, yeah. And learner. Learner. Yeah, any idea what they are? Relator. Um, I would say um, a later would probably be how you relate to others, possibly. Mm-hmm. Um. And not just others, uh, circumstances, situations, and how you handle them mm. in different ways. Uh, self-assurance. I think I'm pretty self-assured. Yeah. I know I know myself. I'm very open to learning new things, uh, which will probably would come under the learner category. Uh, input. Input would be. Would that be in relation to other people's input? Yeah, it's different. To how they see me? Yeah, different to plenty of people. It's you know gathering ideas, thoughts. Yeah, I think input to me. I guess if I had to, if I had to put my own description straight off the bat, I'd say open-mindedness for mm. myself. You know, mm. um, individualization. Uh, um, that's a hard one for me. 
if it's to do with myself and awareness, self-awareness, I would say I'm I'm on top of that. You know, I I wouldn't I wouldn't think that I was set in my ways if it relates to that in any way. I'm very much open to suggestion and change. Change doesn't concern me in any way, in any capacity. It would be it moving overseas for work or, you know, so individualization, I don't know, that's a tough one. Mm. Interesting you say it's a tough one, and I see the contrast between an includer and an individualizator. <laughs> no, because I'm... I'm not introverted or into no, myself or, no. you know, they, in any way. They're actually five strengths uh, within the 34. And this yeah. is what I like to do when we do uh, team unpacks or when when uh, one of my coaches does an unpack and helps me out with a friend. Um, yeah. They are the top five strengths of Donna. And okay. in that order, and interesting the way you put it, but what I'd like you to do as a, as a, as a thank you is on that Facebook group we introduced you to, if you could come up with two or three sentences that include those words or formulas of those words, so relater could be relate or uh, relating or something like that. Individual could be singular or personal or, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah just sort of incorporate those oh. words into one or two sentences on your experience and, and thanking her for what she's done. Um mm. And uh, yeah, outside of this call, we'll, I'll pass on her details because I'm sure she'd love to keep in touch with you. And if she can help you in any way, she she will. I know that for a fact. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anything now you told me that. Now you told me that. That actually looks quite a lot more straightforward. <laughs> you know, because I'm not these things. Now you're telling me it's about Donna. I, I can I can relate to that with the things that she said today. Yeah. Well, you can see how. She related with you. She she yeah. offered you that self assurance. She treated you like an individual. She she collected okay, the ideas and, and the learning that she'd picked and and went through a great you know, hour and a half yeah. session with her, which is awesome. And yeah. um, mate, the fact that you're that quick and you can pick up that idea of what's happened there and how you relate to your best mate and how this can correlate into a team environment by you knowing your strengths individually. And then identifying the other people around you and their strengths to be able to complement each other is phenomenal. This is where team environments and, and in business and in sport and whatever you want to look at is a massive, massive sort of concept. I mean, the way I like to explain it, and this is why we've made it so easy in golf, it's like Ambrose. You get someone who can drive, and that's a strength. You get someone who can chip, and that's a strength. You get someone who can putt, and that's a strength, and you get the short game. You, yeah. You blend them over four key areas and you come together as a team and you smash it out of the park. I guess that's quite important when I've coached soccer in the past as well. You know, it's a team sport, but there's individuals and I have to have to take into account all their individual strengths and personalities and weaknesses. And I always try and not put people in the position of one of their weaknesses. I always try and play to their strengths, which is exactly what you're awesome. telling me. Awesome. How old are the kids you coach, mate? Uh, all ages, mate. I did under 18s two years ago. I've coached seniors. Um, I've coached Colts under 16s. I've coached under 10s. I've coached primary school back in England. Who you got this year? Anyone? Uh, no, no. I, I, basically, my son started uni, and I, I, I had a choice. I either play Masters football on a th Wednesday evening, or I coached Metro League, which meant not playing, and I, I still want to play a little bit, mate, to be honest. Okay. It was a personal choice. Just keep me... Cool. Uh, exercising. <laughs> well, mate, I, yeah. you know me, I can talk for an hour. So, Tell um, me, mate, we, thought we should end it and let everyone go to bed. <laughs> we'll, we'll take this conversation elsewhere, but is um, is there anything you want to add, Donna, or have you got any questions for Jeff before we wrap that up? Um, actually, I just want to say um, I know that this is quite a, a confronting situation for you to come into given that everybody's listening and all the rest of it. So I just want to really thank you for playing at 100% and being very transparent with us and just really opening up and um, allowing us to really explore your strengths to the highest level that we possibly could tonight. It's been really, really cool and I'm really, really appreciative of the fact that you've just been so open to all of this. And what are, are there people listening? I didn't know. I forgot. 
Well, that's it. It was just really weird just doing the um, You're so used to face-to-face, -face, you know what I mean? And, but, yeah, as we progressed, it was easy. So, yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's been good. Thank cool. you. Very welcome. Super. All right, mate. Well, um, we're going to stay on the line because uh, we want to have a bit of a team chat. Um, so we'll let you go. And uh, okay. you and I can catch up over the next couple of days and uh, it's, I've got to give you that information about the house and all that sort of stuff. So. Yeah, no worries, mate. Sounds good. Do I just hit the, the close button on this, quit, and that's it? Uh, yeah, mate. Yeah, that'll be awesome. So uh, all, right. all the best and goodbye from everyone on the call, all 175 of them. What? I'm kidding, mate. There's like four of them. <laughs> Oh, I don't care anyway, the more the merrier. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. I appreciate right, it. All the best. Take it easy. See ya. Bye. All right. I'll... Good to see you, Ash, mate. Turning up two minutes to go. How good's that? You're all off mute. Howdy, you there? Yep. Me, Aaron, Tina. Yep, just got in. I missed it all. Bugger. <laughs> That's all right. You get QA time. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Good, went for a while. Yeah. Now, um, Tina, I'm guessing you might be like me. I'm busting to go to the loo. So if the four of you want to keep talking, I'll be back in 30 seconds. What did you think, That was Donna? awesome. <laughs> oh, Donnie, you rocked it. That was freaking awesome. Yeah. So fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it was really good. It was funny, actually. Like, after all the training that we planned and everything, it didn't feel scary. It did before the call, but as soon as I started talking, it just started to flow. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It sounded like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just I don't know. It felt really comfortable. So when you guys do it, don't don't be afraid because it's it's amazing. It's like it's actually really exhilarating. Besides the fact that I'm exhausted now, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm bouncing off the walls. <laughs> yeah. Did you find that the um that input report really helped, Donna? Sorry. Did you find that that input report, that one that you were looking at, the one that was um, specifically for Jeff, did you find that really helped? Yes, yes, I did. And I also found, like, um, just doing the table, having a talk beforehand, all of that helped a lot. And thinking of a few questions prior to had also helped. But it was funny, actually, because there was a couple of the questions that I noticed we'd written down, but he'd automatically answered them without us even having to ask him, which was quite funny, I found. <laughs> he was very switched on. Yeah, yeah, he was. And the fact that he got over his report so many times as well, um, <laughs> that's quite interesting. Yeah. Actually, Nick picked up that um, the tandem, the tag team, was really um, helpful and useful, I think. Did you find that um, having Danny there as well um, gave you some time to sort of listen, reflect, and then maybe come in... Um, you know, with a little bit more clarity? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I feel like there were times where, um, so in that first section of communication, at the end of it, I kind of was like, okay, I don't know how to hand this over, and he just jumped right in there. So mm. in that sense, it felt a lot more safer in, in the space that we were in. But then also when he tried to use the example about the car and his wife and that didn't quite relate to him, um, the fact that I was able to then go in and tell him about how some of these things are turned up and turned down and all the rest of it. So I think we kind of both carried each other and it felt, yeah, it felt like it was a safe space. Yeah, it was really well done. Mm, it really wor it really worked well. Yeah, I've got to... I've got to add to that, Donna, super impressive. I'm so proud and you should be really proud of yourself. Um, I literally threw you in the deep end and meant to and you know I love doing it and that's why I wanted you to go first with communication because you worked that out and it's beautiful. It's brilliant. Yeah, you're an awesome coach. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. Yeah, you both did amazing. Like it, for a first time that was – so informative um, and some of the light bulb moments that he had throughout the session were fantastic and he he's he was a very fast learner he picked up things really quickly so you both had to move at an even faster pace um, to catch up with him so it was really really impressive to hear both of you um do that together so well done thank you thank you
Yeah, I think that preparation time too that you guys had at the beginning, the ability to be able to talk about it, because even when you just prepare on your own, um, it's not as because you're not hearing the ideas as they came out. So, um, as I said, I mean, I was lucky enough to be able to hear the, well, you know, sort of hear the preparations that was going through and I and then hear the finished result. And I think um, you can just see how well it works working as a team. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It really does, especially when it's your first time. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Mm. I could say something, but I won't. <laughs> you're going to say something about virginity, aren't you? No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, Tina, did you figure it out in the first two minutes or what? No. <laughs> I'm still trying to work it out. Okay. Well, the idea is um, either do it together or I'm happy to do it with you, your unpacks. Um, I love it. I just enjoy doing it, so I'm happy to do it with you and <clears throat> walk yeah. like that um, with Kim and Jacqueline. Yeah, I think I think that might work just until I'm more confident with the questioning style and yeah. because it, it it's not just about asking the questions, it's actually about listening to their responses mm. and then knowing when to go deeper and knowing when to sort of explore that section and chunk across mm. um, because then you, because you're trying to think of the next question, you might actually miss some really um, Im important information that they're trying to get across to you um, so that you can actually work it even more or milk it even more for um, for that particular theme. So having the, the tandem or the, the tag team going, I think it gives the other a chance to really understand the strength that you're covering to start off with and then have some thinking time, reflecting time and listening while the other one's, um, you know, delivering their section. So I think as a start it's probably um, a good idea. I really like it. Cool. Yeah. The other thing which I think is worth um, pointing out, because I was having a chat to Linda too about the, um, some of the differences in coaching styles and one of the things with the strength stuff, often the idea is planting a seed and you don't always need to go deep on certain Ideas often it's not a matter of with the strength stuff going for a quick result or going for a particular result in a, in a session, particularly with the unpacks. It's about planting a whole lot of seeds, getting them to start thinking and then going into different things in the second and third session. Um, so it's, as I said, it's one of the things that when I was having a, mm. had quite a long chat with Linda the other night and it is a slightly different style that Gallup, I mean, obviously you can use the strength stuff the way you would with the, some of the TCI stuff and wanting to go deep. But um, I guess what I'm saying is be kind to yourself because you don't always have to go deep with this stuff because you plant seeds and it is already deep. And what I mean mm. is because the strengths is so much a part of someone, you can give them an idea and it will go deep straight away mm. and then it's just a matter of letting it play out and it will come out in further sessions because a lot of this too, it's not just about doing the unpack, it's about getting the extra um having it as a coaching client will go for, you know, six mm. sessions or longer even. I mean, it wasn't until halfway through, <clears throat> I think, uh, probably the end of Includer coming into ideation that he really started to realise how much he hasn't done so well as in in his relationship and mm. probably hadn't included his, his wife in as much as he should have. Um and that was the turning point. That was the, the aha moment that I think it, it mm. could have gone deeper or we could have just let it um, sit. And I'm, I'm quite happy after listening to Nick explain what um, Linda and, and Nick have been talking about is that we've got so much time to take this wherever we want to go. This is just basically naming these strengths. And we, don't, we may not, and I say may, may not want to take them too deep because you do want to bring them back and, and encourage them and, I mean, I don't know if you realise the door that we opened there for the relationship coaching for Donna and um, the potential that, that he could become a client of hers. Um, mm. And that was my goal. I had no idea where it was going. And, you know, my ideas, they fucking jump off the page every five seconds. But, <laughs> um, yeah. but I, I was flying by the seat of my pants. I don't know about you, Donna. And it probably comes across in our voices that we sounded very confident and you sounded great. Um, I don't know how I came across, but you're, the impression I'm getting from you, Tina, and 
it sounded like we knew what we were doing and we were all prepared and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> it did. <laughs> you you were very convincing if I didn't know better. Uh, yep. Well, yeah, we've got well, a I think maybe picture. maybe my my maybe my statement before not so much deep, but maybe being able to connect the dots a little bit more with the strengths and how um, yeah, exactly what Nick said, planting the seeds as far as um, yeah, well, now that you've realised um, something, you know, that you're actually including everybody else, but you, your relationship is, you know, you're not actually focusing on that. Maybe it's something that you need to start looking at why or how you can change that. Mm. Um, and, you know, and we're happy to discuss that in more detail in, you know, in the claim section. Um, so there is a, a next step to what you can do um, to to make this better. Mm. So how could we how could we be using these strengths that you have already naturally and mm. using them in your relationship um, and mm. up in that section of your life? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So just allow I suppose allowing him to see the connection during the the naming it um, and planting a couple more seeds in there. So then he'll he'll go away and this will just start like it will just continue to process mm. until he does the next section. So if he's already able to put a lot of things together, he'll he'll be able to connect those dots a lot quicker. So yeah, very good. Um, I actually had a question for Nick. Mm -hmm. Um, he said when he mentioned his relationship, he said, "Oh yeah, maybe I need to turn down." my strengths a little bit at work so that I have a little bit more to give at night yeah. and like to his partner. And what I'm curious about is whether whether you can overuse your strength, like in terms of it, thinking of it like a, a petrol tank, um, so you've only got so much to use per day. Is it like that where right. you could run out of fuel by the time you get home or is it just a matter of him being aware of it now and being able to turn it up a little bit more at home? Yeah, uh, no, I think it's because you're in flow, um, it, it it doesn't mean that you need to turn it down when you go home, but what it might mean, depending on what his wife's strengths are, maybe some of his, um, if he's too dials up too high on some of his strengths, it's um, it rubs against hers. For example, we had, when we did the course, we had someone with Includer on the course and she said whenever they go out for dinner, she will say to her husband, oh, I want to bring up, bring a whole lot of friends, I want to include a lot of people. And he would say, but hang on, I just want to have dinner with you. And so mm. it wasn't until we were in the course and she could that she actually saw that by her using her includer at full bore, mm. she was actually um, somehow um, rubbing against or it was landing on her husband in, in, a, in a way that he didn't always like. So sometimes mm. it's a matter of when you look at your strengths, being able to dial up or dial down when you see how it lands. Not, so she, not uh, offering that significance, that need for significance. Mm. Well, with her husband, if, if he had uh, individualisation, for example, and wanted to, I mean, she didn't know what he had, but it was just a light bulb moment for her that, hey, wow, well, not everybody wants to have a crowd yeah. when you go out. Yeah. yeah. And I think so she may have had woo and include her as well. Maybe she did have woo as well. I can't remember. Uh. <laughs> it, was like, it was like this real, it was, as I said, we were all talking. It was this huge light bulb mom, moment for her. She said, oh, mm. no, this is what my husband's talking about all the mm. time when he says, can't we just go out for dinner on our own? Yeah. And so for yeah. her it was a matter of making that realisation and then thinking, okay, so now that I've had this realisation, what can I do with it? Mm. And I'll, perfect. I'll and that's, that's exactly what I was meaning. That 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 would be absolutely perfect to have slotted in right there. Mm. I'd also add, um, you don't have to turn it down at work. It's not like a half empty, half full setup. The analogy I like to use is the candle, that you can light a second candle and the first flame doesn't have to dim to pass the energy on. Um, mm -hmm. In that situation, I would have possibly gone into – Keep what you're doing. If it works well, at work. But then at home, just dial it down. You don't need to dial down during the day to make up for at night or vice versa. Yeah. Because yeah, when mm. you're in flow, you should be able to use your strengths. That that's how you're most natural. Mm. So it's certainly not going to diminish you by using your strengths. Is is that the sort of thing you were talking about, Donna? Yeah, yeah. That 
exactly answers my question the way you've explained it. Like, mm. Yeah, I've, yeah. Because like when he said that, I felt like there was something that had to be said, said there, but I didn't know what to say. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, take the notes. And uh, that can be a good point of call to to do a follow up next week or something like that. Yeah. Mm. yeah you know what I mean? That's I, I I think actually there you go the ideation. If we do these sort of calls, we can have a question answer thing afterwards amongst us as coaches, and we can create some more ideas for the coach to then take back to the client at a later date. Things we may have missed, things we could add to, all sorts of things. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. What do you I think, Ash? Did you enjoy that, mate? All 35 seconds of it? <laughs> I got 35 seconds. I did. I can see how it, it's it's effective for your first run together as a, as a, as a couple, um, doing it in tandem together. Mm. I can see how... I'm curious because I don't know anything about Jeff. Is he, uh, is he someone that you've, you've brought in, haven't you, Danny? Yeah. And um, you've offered this as for him... To get the experience? Yeah, absolutely, mate. He's um, He runs the golf networking group, the one I was telling you about with the 60-odd yep. CEOs here on the Gold Coast, and he also runs Burley Tourism. So it's a Gold Coast tourism company. Yeah. So um, very good contact. Mm. I've got a question for Donna and you during the call because I didn't hear it. For example, when Nick and Tina value your feedback, let's say that halfway through the call, you're working on the strengths, and even though it's an initial unpack, and and you have a massive light bulb moment at that point, you could could you just put the strengths away and then just go straight to okay, we're just going to do this right now. What do you think, Donna? I think that kind of goes back to what Nick was saying before, like sometimes going in and where you need to, and sometimes just touching on it, and having that as reference for the next time but I mean for me personally if I felt like it was something that needed to be needed to go into right then and there because they were there in that space in that moment then I think I would probably go with it because I don't believe that it's that you should be stopping a person when they're at that point of making that mm. that change um, mm. but yeah I think yeah I, I guess from my perspective, and I don't know whether it's right or wrong, is that I just go with the feeling mm. of the moment and whether I felt like it needed to be taken mm. to that next level, whether it was something that could be used as a follow-up. And I've got a feeling, do I, I'll, I'll answer that as well. I've got a feeling, and this is just me listening to different strengths and different unpacks, that as Linda says, if there's one strength that really stands out, what would it be? I think all of us seem to have one that really stands out, but quite often means that the other four you don't need to, to focus on as much time. So I've got a feeling that throughout the unpacks, one of those strengths is really going to resonate. So what you possibly might be talking about, Ash, is you're going to get to a point during the unpack where all of a sudden it's going to feel like you've got to spend more time on it. So if, it, in effect, you're spending 10 to 15 minutes per strength, that's up to for an hour, an hour 15, you could actually have an extra 15 minutes up your sleeve if you really wanted to focus on that main strength or diverse into a little bit of a journey or a sidetrack uh, into another area. I don't know. I'm just playing with an idea there because uh, he seemed to really kick into ideation and I don't know if that's because it's my strength and I focused a bit more on it, but he mm. seemed to suggest that 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 really heightened when he was in flow, but it could drag him down and, and pull him down into the basement because he had too many ideas. And as a strategy, would it be a case of like tonight he's had his unpacked, he's got a lot of insights, and at the end of the session, because I didn't hear it, it would be okay, Jeff, I'm grateful, everything, etc. I'm just going to leave it there for now, for tonight. I'm really pleased where we've been. Would it be okay if I check in with you in 24 hours' time and then you can upsell? Yeah. Where, where, where do you go for the pitch? Just leave him a day or two or three days? Yeah, so I... That's I, kind I, of what you did already, Danny. Hmm. Sorry, say that again? I was going to say that's kind of what you had done already when you had mentioned to him um, 
to give me a call and have a chat with me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. the concept. And, and I think it's, for me, it's a lot easier eh, if there's two of you that one person passes it on to the other. So, you know, my intention was always to send him to Donna. Um, I'm only down the road from him, so I know he's going to contact me anyway. But this is, for me, about helping you guys find clients. So um, what we get out of the back end is beautiful. But for him and for what I'm learning from you guys and, and those people that are doing their unpacks, around the six to ten day mark, um, quite a few of you seem to hit a brick wall, for want of a better word, and hit a basement patch. And I think that happens a lot in coaching, especially for people that haven't done it before. Um, it's just, to me, I mean, I've had, uh, what is it, weight loss clients where they've lost, you know, four or five kilos in the space of a week and then their body shuts down and they're sick and they're, you know, they're violently ill and they think it's their body saying, don't do this anymore, where in fact I believe it's their body saying, hang on, I'm scared, this is starting to work. So with these strengths unpack, um, I think some of the clients are, are listening to it and then all of a sudden they get into the point of, fuck, what have I been doing for my whole life? I've been focusing on my weaknesses, but that's what I know how to do, so I'm going to continue to do it and my body doesn't like it sort of thing. But um, Yeah, I think keep in touch within the week. 24 hours might be a little bit soon. You might want to just let it filter for a few days, uh, but give them your contact details if they want to contact you. I think it's definitely worthwhile. I agree with that as well. Um, I think it's like any coaching. It takes a little while for it to sink in and, yeah, be the better process it properly. Mm. So, yeah, cool. yeah, just thinking you think of... Sorry, Ash? You think he was well? Sorry, Do you think he was well? I think so. I think he was wooed, mate. Wooed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> It was interesting though, different different uh, concept with a man having woo. I didn't, you know, there's Giselle and, and Tina, I suppose, and they're two completely different things, but I I haven't known Jeff for that long. And I wouldn't say he woos, wins over people. Yeah, yeah he's, he's... He communicates yeah. well yeah. and he includes people. The, the To me, what stands out for him is his includer. He loves golf. He loves people playing. Um Fuck, he's competitive. He loves to win, but, um, you know, good man. So, yeah, Wu didn't really stand out for me, not just the call, but in general, knowing him, which is interesting. Yeah, but you didn't pick up on it tonight. What was that? You didn't pick up on it tonight. Who? I'm just curious. Did you, did you, did you pick up on it after talking about it with him, or have you still not clicked on to... How, how you think it might have might have come out in him because I, I felt like I could see it in him. Okay. Definitely. So I was... the, the, way, the way that I could see it in him was I felt like when he was in his woo strength, more of his feminine energy was coming out. Okay. So the fact that if somebody was to walk past and not say hello to him, while he may not express that to them, he will go home and say something to his wife because... It, it does offend him on some level, and to me, that was his feminine energy coming out. Mm. I don't know if anybody else. Yeah, I wonder. It's funny. Or... It's funny you mentioned that, Donna, because I actually uh, initiated that conversation, saying the masculine and the feminine um, with the woo and whether it's different. Um, and having the woo, um, I, I didn't actually find that there was uh, a difference in the masculine and feminine, but with with his comment about you know if someone doesn't say hello then it's their loss um, it's yeah it's pretty much um, a little hurtful but you just then take the positive out of that and go well it's their loss you know they they're missing out on some woo so um, yeah I, I just found that it um, it was very similar <laughs> um, regardless but I did actually um, it's like you've point got it out that. It's like you got a little, little pouch and you hand it out to people as they walk past. Here, have it's a not little, bit of Danny. Wood. It's not little. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but yeah, no, it's interesting that you picked up on that. It was more feminine, so that's really interesting, Donna. I wonder if it's 
sexual in that context where men with woo, women pick up on it and women with woo. Ah, yes, that could be it because mm. Donna picked up on it and you didn't, Danny. Yeah. But then again, we as women, we pick up on um, your woo and even um, uh, Giselle's woo. So is it just that guys don't pick up on, on woo with other guys? But as I said, women so pick up on as, woo. We see it as good mates and that you could get along with someone really well. I think that's still woo. And it's yeah, yeah, it's um, I suppose it's it's not. It's like a flat line for men. So, so men that get along with men, it's like, well, that should be the norm. Where when you don't get along with someone, you think that's sort of below the line. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm lost. Then. So <laughs> with guys, so what? What I'm hearing then. Dan is uh, with guys. It's just a, it's like a given. You just mates with everyone. There's yeah. no underlying factors. Whereas chicks are a little, you know, oh well, I don't know whether I like what she's wearing, so I'm not going to like her type thing. Um, is that what you mean? Possibly. Yeah. Okay. Possibly. Could be just Dan. Could be just Danny's map. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> yeah. Could be that I'm, too. I think I've been misunderstood here, but uh, <laughs> it's getting late. You know, I'm normally passing out. Yeah, I'm gonna fall asleep in my computer. Yeah. Um, oh before we before we do go though, can I just say thank you very much, Danny, for the opportunity to um be able to assist you tonight in the webinar and speaking with Jeff and just pushing me outside of my comfort zone. I really do appreciate that, and I thought you were great as always. And yeah, I just want to let you know that. Thank you. And reciprocated. Ben, Thank you to you both. I hope you feel proud really that you uh, officially launched the first episode of Strengths TV. <laughs> <laughs> well done, you Yay. both. Good work. Yeah, cool. I don't know if we can show it to anyone, though, because it's copyrighted this word document. <laughs> can I ask a quick question? What am I looking at on the screen, and where does that come from? It comes from those cards. Oh, okay. Um, yeah.